In this example, I want to go ahead and take a look at how we might deal with the fact that um, we have all of these different lambda functions that uh, we've built out through lambda and ultimately our client applications. And when I say client applications, I'm talking really kind of three separate varieties of client applications. Um, we could be talking about a web-based application where we're accessing these functions through JavaScript. Uh, we could be talking about an iOS application or an Android application. So those are the three types of clients that I always think of when we're talking about accessing these Lambda functions. Okay, and when I say uh, we're talking about client applications that are accessing these Lambda functions, um, what I really mean is that those client applications are gonna let access these Lambda functions through an API. Okay, our client applications cannot access these Lambda functions directly. Okay, these Lambda functions execute within the AWS, um, within the AWS cloud, but they're not open to the outside world unless we layer another service on top of them. And that other service that we layer on top of them is API Gateway, and we will look at API Gateway going forward. Okay, but for the time being, um, we're gonna have these functions set up, and the way we'd access these functions is through an API, and let's talk a little bit about um, dealing with an API. So I'm just going to bring up text edit to kind of explain this. Okay, so I don't want to create a document. But really, what we have is these CRUD methods. And when I say CRUD, I'm really talking about the acronym CRUD. Um, let me blow up the font here. Uh, that didn't do it. Okay, so we have our CRUD methods, and when we say CRUD methods, we're really talking about create, read, update, and delete. Right, so we have these different types of methods. Update and delete. Okay, so we have those corresponding Lambda functions here, okay? Um, I guess I, I wanna highlight update because I don't know that we actually talked about it, um, but when we did an insert Dynamo, we actually used the put item command and that put item command either does an insert or an update depending on the data that's passed or if the record already exists. So we did handle an update. Um, so we have these functions, right? So, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a note here. So this is the insert Dynamo. Our read could be either scan or query or query and filter. I don't care which one, but for now I'm just gonna say that it's the scan Dynamo. Our update is actually insert Dynamo, right? That's, that's gonna handle both the create and the um, update. And then our delete will be our function called delete Dynamo. Okay, so those are the functions that we have in place for our create, read, update, and delete. So whenever we're interacting with data, you'll hear this CRUD acronym, which is basically, how do I modify my data? And now we have Lambda functions to handle all of those corresponding tasks. Okay, so what ends up happening, though, is that I want my client application to invoke these functions. I want my client to be able to access these CRUD methods. So what ends up happening is I put an API in front of it. Okay, so um, what ends up happening, I'm just gonna tab over a little bit so you can kind of get an idea, is what I wanna do is I actually wanna put an API in front of these methods. Okay, so if a client application is gonna access it, what's gonna happen is they're gonna access it through this API, and I guess I can't, indent all of this, my client application is going to invoke that API, and then my API is gonna uh, indirectly call these create, read, update, and delete methods. So my client, being iOS or Android or a web application, invokes my API, and then my API decides, am I trying to do a create, a read, an update, or delete? Well, that really depends. Okay, so what I mean by that is this create, 
is going to get handled if you're accessing the API. And when I say API, I'm really talking about the API URL. Okay, and my indentation is getting ugly, but I have a, a URL. So I'm going to have a web-based URL that I interact with. If I'm going to do a create, I'm going to do it through an HTTP post, right? So if I have a post, whoops, if I have a post method, that indicates to me that I should be doing a create. If I have an HTTP get, that indicates to me that I should be doing a read. If I'm doing an update, that's going to be the result of me doing a put. And if I'm doing a delete, that's going to be the result of me doing a delete. Okay. So depending on how I access this API URL, depending on which HTTP verb I use, that's going to determine which uh, Dynamo, or I'm sorry, which Lambda function I should invoke. Okay. So the client is going to access my URL. How they access my URL then determines whether, whether it is a post or a put. So the client's determining, are they doing a post? Are they doing a get? Are they doing a put? Are they doing a delete? And then based on that, in my API, I can then take action accordingly. So if you told me the client's accessing my API via a put, then I know what they really mean is that they want to do an update. If instead the client was accessing my API via an HTTP delete, that I know that that means they want to do a delete, okay? So the client is going to determine which Dynamo, or um, sorry, which Lambda function they want to invoke based on the HTTP verb that they choose. Okay, so if we put all of this together, so I, we have all these Lambda functions here, one way that I can handle this is I can create a new Lambda function. Okay, so this is going to be my uh, dynamo crud function, create, read, update, and delete. I want to handle it all. Uh, but instead of authoring it from scratch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blueprint. And that blueprint, so the hello world function is what we've been using as a blueprint. What I want to do instead is I actually want to use this first option right here, which is to create a microservice that interacts with a dynamo DB table. Okay. And it the latest version that it uses is Node.js 18. Okay, so um, we've written some code in Node.js 20, so it'll look a little bit different, um, but you'll get the idea, I think. So I'm going to choose Node.js 18. Um, my function name, uh, so because I'm using a blueprint, it's going to ask me to type in that name again, so Dynamo Crud. Um, my, it's going to create a new role. So it automatically creates a role that's going to allow me to interact with DynamoDB. So instead of creating a role with basic Lambda permissions, it's going to create a role from policy templates that allows me to interact with DynamoDB. So I won't have to change the permissions. So I'm going to call this my role name, which is going to be Dynamo Crud Role. Okay. And then uh, if I scroll down enough, so pass the function code, you'll see that it automatically creates an API gateway trigger. I actually want to skip over that option for now. So I'm going to remove that. And then you can see the templated code. So I'm going to go ahead and create the function based on that templated code. Okay, and then I just want to look at this templated code. Um, I think it's a good starting point for our API, but the reality is, is I, I don't know that it gets us very far. It's kind of like the um, uh, chat GPT version of uh, AWS Lambda. So it kind of gets you where you want to be, but it kind of doesn't. Okay, so one thing you'll notice is that um, it's going to do a switch on the HTTP method. Okay, so it's doing a switch statement. So if the HTTP method is delete, let's do a delete. If it's a get, let's do a read. If it's a post, let's insert a new record. If it's a put, let's go ahead and update a record. And that goes back to what I was talking about over here, where our client's going to access our API URL via one of these HTTP verbs. And then based on those HTTP verbs, I'll take the corresponding action that I want to actually handle in DynamoDB.
Okay, so if I look back over here, you'll see that that's kind of what's going on. So based on the HTTP method, whether it's delete or get or post or put, I'm taking the corresponding DynamoDB action. And if it's none of those, then um, basically you arrived at the AP, API via some unsupported HTTP verb, which is fine. We'll just handle it. We'll throw an error and we'll deal with it. Okay. Uh, an important thing to note here is if you look at what ends up happening, so the way this would typically work, if you look at all of the Lambda functions that we wrote, we basically created a DynamoDB client and then sent a new um, scan command or delete command or get item command or put item command. And each of those commands took parameters based on what we were trying to do. So if we're trying to insert a record, for instance, the parameters are different than if we were trying to scan a table. Okay. Um, what you'll notice, though, is if I do the HTTP get, the way I get my parameters is from the query string. Okay, so the URL is going to include the parameters if I'm doing it via an HTTP get. So if I'm doing a read, the parameters for that read come from the query string. All other cases, so whether I'm doing a delete or a post or a put, all other cases, all of those parameters come from the event body. And when we say event body, what we're really talking about is the request body. And we'll look at that as we go forward and deal with API Gateway. Okay, but I do want you to know that um, parameters are passed differently if I'm doing a read versus any other method. Get, or I'm sorry, delete, post, or put. Um, just parameters are passed differently. So if I'm doing a read, parameters are passed through the URL as query string parameters. If I'm doing any other operation, then the parameters are passed through the request body. Okay, and they're calling it the event body here, um, but it's really the request body. Okay, so based on the HTTP method, we take our corresponding Dynamo action, and then ultimately we return our response, right? Whatever that happens to be. Okay, now when I said this is kind of like the chat GPT answer of how do I deal with AWS Lambda and then connect to DynamoDB, well, what I'd say is that this is kind of an incomplete version of a delete. This is an incomplete version of a scan. This is an incomplete version of a post. This is an incomplete version of a put. But the switch statement is kind of nice to have. And what I mean by that is um, I have one Lambda function that's going to kind of deal with all of those different operations, reading, inserting, updating, deleting, so the whole all the CRUD methods. So I have one function that deals with all of them. Um, so from API Gateway, I can just say, hey, if you access my URL, go to this function and handle it. But what I would suggest is if you want to take this approach, then um, the other functions that we've already written um, for delete and for read and for insert and for update, um, I'd probably plug in the code from those other functions and use that as my example. Okay, so the, this is kind of leaving you wanting more and not necessarily functional, um, but you kind of have the, the template for how I'd set that up. And then the only thing here is now we know that from API Gateway, we are then going to have to determine which HTTP verb caused us to get here and then take action accordingly. Okay, uh, another takeaway from this video is when I create my code, I can write my code from scratch or I can use some of the AWS built-in blueprints. Okay, so sometimes it gives you a good start and, turn and points you in the right direction of, of what am I actually trying to do. So by creating this microservice um, endpoint for a DynamoDB database table, um, you kind of get an idea of what that code should look like. Okay, so this is an example of using a Lambda blueprint to create that microservice endpoint. And it, it kind of goes back over the stuff that we've already done in terms of creating CRUD methods that access a DynamoDB table.